in the Double Evolution Tournament in Clash Royale. So we're going to be breaking down the best decks that the top players have been using and showcasing the objective, most successful decks in the game. So depending on what you guys want to play, there's going to be a different deck for you. Even the decks that I don't like playing, I'm going to be playing today just to showcase what the top players are using. So one of the first decks that I don't like at all, but has been very, very strong by to the point that I can't even ignore it anymore, is this Lavahound deck. So Lavahound has been played by around 30 or maybe 30 or 20 percent of the people right now it's usually goblin drill and lob hound and lob hound obviously counters goblin drill because a lot of the goblin drill decks just do not have good anti-air defenses so you're going to be spamming bombers and knights and then you're going to be going in for like lob hounds and front of dragons and balloons and skeleton dragons uh mostly behind your lob hound just building up big pushes when you're able to we'll show you guys how it works it's not one of those decks that you just lob hound in the back unless you know you're up a little bit Generally, you want to cycle your knight as often as you can. Cycling the bomber only costs two elixirs, so that's a pretty easy play to do every single time. And yeah, we're going to be having a pretty good time here. We're going to play a couple games with this Lava Hound deck before we switch decks. Also, I haven't played Clash Trial in about two days. Took a little bit of a break. It's nice to do that. It's always nice to, you know, enjoy life, come back to it uh, whenever you're feeling like it. And yeah, I'm really thankful that I can do that. So I want to say thank you to you guys that are supporting me here. Um, a lot of people that stream Clash Trial, and they do that as like their... their uh, uh, like only thing if they leave and they don't stream for like two days I don't lose everything but the fact that we can like get ahead on YouTube videos and make sure that the contents really good uh, it makes me happy to see the the fact that you know I have a more flexible schedule that allows me to have like a really nice personal life too anyway we're gonna lob hound here in front and we're gonna be able to have the inferno dragon lob hound push come at our opponent if he rockets that it's totally fine if he drops any uh card that we can evo bomber we definitely will and yep we're gonna go and snag that I wonder if we can hit the spear goblins too that'd be really cool if not, it's fine. I guess we'll probably activate King Tower. Oh, we don't even get that. Okay. Nice. That's really cool. All right, we're going to go Skeleton Dragons here. I think this is the right play because generally you want to be cycling Knights and Bombers, and you don't really want to be going in for Balloons directly into that uh, unless they have their Bomb Tower to cycle like that. So no Bomb Tower, no Spear Goblins. I'm in a pretty good spot right now. If I identified that he would have like the Tornado Magic Archer deck, I think I would be playing really aggressive right now because I, I think that it would be hard for him to do anything about it. Uh, he still might be having a pretty bad cycle here. If we can go arrows, that might make sense. It also might just make sense to go balloon because I'm pretty sure the knight two taps the firecracker. And then he has literally nothing besides spear goblins, which will die to the snowball. So we'll take that. That's probably going to be tower down. And we're in a really good spot. As you guys can see, you identify your opponent's defenses. When they don't have them in cycle, you punish them. And you say, hey, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. And you, you know, this vibe ahead uh, with the victory. So generally, um, when we play against hog rider ducks not going to have a really good answer to that like we don't have a good answer to hog rider like i think i'm going to be bombering on it oh okay well that's fine and use an evo knight here with the bomber and be totally fine it should be able to kill the e-barbs and it should also be able to kill the rest of his stuff too and obviously he's gonna like overcommit like crazy and try to do some shenanigans but i don't think it matters that much because we can balloon and then we can go in for skeleton dragons on this we know we're not going to get three crowned it's just like can i stop him from being annoying <laughs> that is the question that i do not have an answer to Am I going to stop him from being annoying, sir? He's going to have arrows, so let's try to go in for the Evo Bomber here, depending on what happens. Yeah, Evo Bomber on barbs, probably? Oh, he, he doesn't. Okay, he just loses everything. That's fine. All we have to do is defend, and then I think we win the game. So, strategy is just stop all the spam. Balloon Tower Defense, guys. Oh, wait, we have 3 crown? What? <laughs> Alright, we'll take it. Screw it. I, I didn't even expect that to happen, but, uh, you know... Nice dominant W. No curse of the first loss. We are, we're chilling out here. We're chilling. No loss in the first game. This is in the Jake I know. Yeah, dude, I took a break. I think uh, maybe it broke the, the loss streak. I'll show you guys my battle log after this for proof. I haven't uh, been a complete degen. I've actually not touched Clash in a while. Also, if you guys uh, want to support me for free, the best way of doing that is just liking the video. It allows me to do more live streams. It allows me to put out more content. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has been doing that. It, Allows me to make much better content than um, than I've been able to before. So thank you guys. Since he just used NATO, it's definitely better for us to Inferno Dragon here. It's going to be able to melt the entire Electro Giant. And then I can probably go in for a Knight and or some other cards here that I want to. The Dark Goblin and uh, Firecracker with Electro Giant. So that's one of the dangers of playing Lava Hound. Sometimes you will match into really annoying decks like this. And you're like, well, this looks like a hard counter because... You think about it, he's going to have Electro Giant, right? We don't really have anything besides Inferno Dragon. And then also on top of that, I think the most difficult thing about this is the fact that he's going to have some random cards in his deck. Like, you know, 
possibly going in for Dark Goblins and Firecrackers that probably should not be inside an Electro Giant deck. But hey, it is what it is. We are going to activate King Tower here, I think. And then we'll see what else we can do afterward. If both Skeleton Dragons go towards that, that would make sense. But of course not. I don't play Lob Hound, so sometimes I will make misplays. I guess we're going to go for a Lob Hound at the river. And we'll see if this works. I mean, we have one Skeleton Dragon left over. I kind of want to go for a Balloon here, to be honest. We get Arrows, that's also pretty cool. Especially since it's not targeting what it should. So that's really, really lucky for us. Um, Knight isn't going to die, is it? How are we going to kill that? Alright, well, I guess we had to cycle 5 Elixir to defend that, and it's not really looking great, because Evo Bomber here probably dies to the Firecracker, since its range is a little bit decreased. I don't see this going extremely well for us. I think the Firecracker actually just straight up kills that. Alright, he'll definitely Tornado on the uh, Inferno Dragon. But, maybe we're able to go Balloon afterwards, because he's going to Tornado. Let's, like, fire, uh, let's fire the Firecracker, and then let's try to go in for a Lava Hound afterward. Maybe this will work out. I think that was like the best play I could have done given like what happened. The fact that he keeps doing that is crazy. Galton Dragons probably take his entire tower. So that's a good thing about Lava Hound is like you have tower taking capabilities. Very, very cool. We know he's going to go in for an Electro Giant though. So that's a huge problem. I can't really cycle stuff into it. Like I kind of have to, but I don't want to. You know? Or don't you know? Not going great. Alright, we're going to try to go for Dalton Dragons on top of the, the bowler like that. Maybe go in for a um, bit of shenanigans as well. Trying to arrows this as soon as I possibly can. Hopefully I'm able to hit everything, and I do. Very nice. Knight in the middle. Let's snowball here. Claw, please? Yeah? Maybe? I mean, we're ballooning because we can't defend against this Electro Giant. Plus, we have a lot of stuff on the map still, so I feel like it's worth. If we get death damage, I'm also okay with that. If I get a hit, that's better, obviously. Okay. I think I kill this without that much damage, then I lob out in the middle and win the game. I believe I win. I don't think he's stopping that. GG. Nice! So obviously a difficult matchup, playing against an Electro Giant deck when you have no building whatsoever and still winning is pretty impressive. So this deck is great. I mean, you, even if you get hard countered and you're not really that good at Lob Hound, like, you can still win. It's really cool. I beat a Hog Rider deck without a building, and then I just beat an Electro Giant deck without a building, and I had Inferno Dragon. That's really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, again, if you guys wanted to see, I, I said I hadn't played in a while, I didn't lie. My last games before that were one day and 21 hours ago, so, yeah been chilling pre-recorded for sure uh no i just responded to your your pre-recorded message so there you go man uh, unless i like predicted the future unless i predicted the future which probably isn't possible all right so yeah great deck um if you don't have evo bomber uh should i go for recruits uh no i mean you could run evo barbs here and evo bats and that works evo bats instead of bomber and then evo barbs instead of night works if you want it all right we're going to play, uh, yeah, we're going to play this game and we'll go to the, another deck right after. So, I don't know. I, it's cool to see different decks like this actually be strong when I really haven't even played anything like this before. Like, I never play Law of Hound. And the fact that it's working into matchups that are really difficult makes me pretty happy because, I don't know, it just shows that the deck is strong in the meta, I guess. And it's nice to see the, the meta changing. We aren't even showing the true strength of the deck yet. The best reason why this deck is strong is obviously if you match into a drill deck that has no anti-air answers at the higher parts of the leaderboard, then you just destroy them. So the fact that you've got Bomber to kill the drill, it's really nice. And then obviously, uh, I mean, the deck just functions really, really cohesively. So I like that. All right, we can go for a Snowball here on top of the Hog Rider to minimize the amount of damage. It's probably worth it since he only gets one Hog Rider hit compared to two or three. I don't know how many it would be. I think it would be three at least. Might be wrong. We can arrows on a firecracker. We can also go skeleton dragons on top of the, the uh, burn tower. Man, it's weird how uh, many anti-air cards these people have. Like, uh, usually you do not see fireball. Most of the time, when I play against people that are running a hog rider deck with firecracker, it's earthquake bomb tower. Uh, so usually it's a pretty easy matchup. This is actually the most difficult matchup I have ever played when I have played against a firecracker deck in my life. Most of the time, it is a huge, 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 huge matchup advantage 
You just look at them and you're like, well, that was easy. And that's not the case here. Alright. So, I think I go Evo Knight as well. I think just spamming two Evos here with the Lob Hound might be the most uh, beneficial decision for us. Do Evo not kill the Valkyrie? Probably, right? Is there any way we don't break through here? I mean, if we can kill the Infernal Tower and then we can Arrows on top of something and the Balloon gets through, that'd be really cool. I'm surprised he didn't Hog Rider with that. Is he just sacking the uh, the stuff every time? Kind of weird. He missed the Fireball. Oh, never mind. I suck. <laughs> Oops. Ain't nobody saw anything there. That was a figment of all of your imaginations, okay? All right. I'm glad we cleared that up. That was, uh, that was a calculated maneuver, my dudes. I... I am drastically disappointed in that sequence, but it is okay. It is fine for me today. I countered the Goblin Barrel again with the Bomber. As you guys can see, it's a really good play. Evo Bomber counters Goblin Barrel for a plus one trade. It actually forces Fireball too, which is great. <gasps> oh! Stop! It hit my tower! Oh my goodness, I think I lose. <laughs> How did I get this matchup? A uh, little bit unlucky. I mean, hey, the guy has Inferno Tower with Fireball for whatever reason. With a Hog Rider that we do not have a building to counter. But I think out of all the matchups that we got, this is definitely the worst one. Um, it happens, but a, if I had stopped the Hog Rider hits, I might have been able to win that. The last one, I didn't have enough Elixir to stop, but the first one was just like super cheese. I don't know. That matchup really sucked. It's winnable. It's just like you have to be a Love Hound aficionado, a Love Hound master to win that. That was really unlucky. I didn't see anything? Yeah, y'all didn't see anything. <laughs> you at the gym yesterday? Uh, today? Sorry. No, I hit it yesterday. I, I had a really good gym day yesterday. I didn't drop the knight fast enough. Usually it's able to full counter wall breakers. I think it counters one of them. Um, if you drop it fast enough and it hits the first wall breaker in front, you're fine. We're in a Love Hound really early on since he just uses bats and wall breakers. So he's going to be spending a little bit more elixir than me. I think this is okay. I'm going to snowball here as well so we can get some more splash damage. Finish off the uh, most of the barbarians is probably worth it. And then we can eat the rest of the damage, then go for a either Balloon or Skeleton Dragons. I think we bombard him with a Balloon. And then we sack against that, and then just all in with the Balloon, and then arrows on the bats or whatever he drops here. It's always interesting to see people's decks. Like, I've never really understood um, like how mid-ladder works against Slaw the Hound. I guess what they do is they kind of just all in uh, with random cards. So, <laughs> I mean... It does work to an extent, but they will lose their tower, so it is kind of funny. But that wall breaker does hit my tower, so I'm going to Skeleton Dragon here. And the Knight will actually force out a mini packer, so that's good. I could obviously Evo Bomber, but that just doesn't make sense since the Skeleton Dragon's going to clean up. I'd rather build up a bigger push and then make something happen there. The cool thing that happens here is like the fact that I'm going towards the right-hand side, all of my overflowing units will also go towards that side as well. So after I defend, all my units are going to go and pile onto the tower. So that's a really good benefit of it. I mean, you one-shot it anyway, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what that log was for, my guy. All right, we can go Evo Knight, and then we can go in for... Ooh, no, no never mind. I was going to say, Evo uh, Skeleton Dragons are probably our best bet, because they do a lot of damage. All right, cool. So it looks like we're going to be in tower-taking capabilities right here. It's unlikely that the guy is going to end up having Wizard with Electro Wizard, so I think we're kind of okay. Um, all I need to do is go for more Lava Hound pushes, and he'll eventually whittle down his tower. He'll probably decide to go in for some random E-Barbs, and we've got Evo Knight, so we're totally fine with that. I can cycle the Inferno Dragon in the back and build up a bigger push. Then I can Lava Hound at the river, and then I can Evo Knight here. Wall Breakers do kind of matter, but not the end of the world. They do some uh, bit of damage, but they don't take everything out. Um, I'm going to go for a Lob Hound here, and then I think I want to start going towards the left-hand side, so... I think we'll balloon in the middle as soon as the double towers start targeting the other stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Where there's a mid-ladder, there's a Mega Knight. <laughs> Where there's a mid-ladder, there's always a Mega Knight, my dudes. That is a true statement. Mega Knight is never gone until it's actually gone. But he'll probably E-Barbs in the middle. I have no anti-ground, uh, so... I might lose. I'm kind of hoping he is forced to defend this. It looks like is the case. 
Very cool. He Electro Wizards randomly. I think they both die. Nice. As expected. Alright, we're still in a pretty bad spot because he does randomly have Electro Wizard in there. But I think that we could defend this if we get back to another night. Hopefully. Probably have to go on the same side as him for the rest of this game. Oh, I just lose. I don't have anything. I can't get back to the night in time. Unless... <gasps> Alright, we're still alive. Somehow. We're going for the three, my guy. We have no other... No other play? No other play? Alright. I mean... There's always a chance. Please? Please? Oh my gosh! Yes! Yes! He had evil wall breakers and he didn't win! Oh my gosh! Let's freaking go! There's no way that those matchups were good. <laughs> Why? Why do you have an Electro Wizard? Why did you have to do that to me? With evil wall breakers when we don't have a building. <laughs> and arrows for my Love Hound as they pop. And arrows for my evil bomber. With five different ground cards when we only have Mini Pekka and Evo Palmer. <laughs> Alright, so I think we've learned something. This might not be the best deck to play against mid ladder menaces because some way, somehow, they're going to have a counter to you. Whether it's going to be a Fireball Firecracker deck for no reason instead of Earthquake and an Inferno Tower instead of Bomb Tower or Tesla. Like, Tesla's fine. Inferno Tower is not. Kind of kills my Lava Hound really fast. <laughs> so. I'd say all four of these matchups were pretty horrendous. Uh, besides the first one. The first one was fine. Because we just arrows on his firecracker, he kind of dies. The other ones, oh my gosh, this Electro Giant with NATO, and then, then the Dark Goblin Firecracker, and then all these other ones. Oh man, they were not ideal. So I would say um, this deck works a lot better at the later stages. So all these people, like, what's his name? Butterfly, rank 14 player. All those guys that are using this deck, there's a lot of them. I don't know. There's like I was looking through it and I was literally seeing 20 to 30% of the pros at the top of the leaderboard all running the same Lava Hound Balloon deck. Literally the insane same Lava Hound Balloon deck. So I don't know why, but pros are just playing this deck and spamming it. Um, yeah, it works really, really well at the top because it counters Goblin Drill. However, it does not do super well against the mid-ladder monsters. All right, let's showcase the deck that is played by the number one player in this tournament. Let's go. Let's keep it up. This is the number one deck. The guy that is uh, Constellation, he is number one with 31, 39 wins and two losses. He is playing that drill deck. Won't be able to watch during work today, but have a great stream, man, and good luck. Peace and love, Legends, is Hot Dog. Dude, Hot Dog, good luck in your work, my guy, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Let's go. Blazing Fury, is this his main deck? Uh, there are a lot of pro players that were playing it. I would, like, as I said, I think like 20 percent of people 20 percent of the pros that hit top 50 in the world were playing that lava hound deck and i don't understand like because i don't like lava hound i'm not a huge fan of it and the fact that it works that well against hard counters as well just showcases how good it is like it's a great deck i would say um this deck has inferno tower just because i guess he doesn't want to lose against lava hound that makes a lot of sense like if you, there's a lot of lava hound in the meta you don't want to lose against it so pretty good Guards are also very strong. They're going to kill the bandit here and the ice wizard. And then I can go for a bomber in front. He's just dead. He already lost. He like severely overcommitted there. Yeah, this game's already over. Um, as you guys can see, when you have a skill level dif difference and you are running like uh, a Love Hound deck, sometimes you'll just get hard counter and you can't do much. But if you're running Goblin Drill and you are better than your opponent, you pretty much instantaneously win the game. Because what happens with Goblin Drill the opponents don't necessarily get to counter it effectively. And your defenses are way more effective and cheaper. So because of that, it's kind of unfair from that perspective. It's pretty fun for us. We clean up the wizard. We're fine. Are you from California? No, I've never really been to California besides for uh, like business trips and stuff like that. I'm not a huge fan of California. It's really warm. There's a lot of protests and stuff. It's just not a really fun place to be. 
Did I tell you guys uh, when I went to BlizzCon, which was really fun, there was uh, there were people banging pots and pans in our hotel, like outside of our hotel room at like four or five a.m. I did not wake up from it, but my friends did, and they did not have a good time. So I was like, wow, that really sucks. I'm sorry that you guys had to deal with that. And they're like, yeah, such is life here in California. I'm like, oh, I didn't really know that. But yeah, if you wake up uh, at a hotel at 4 a.m. in the morning to people banging pots and pans for no reason, uh, it is not really a fun time. And we were checking out like what their reasoning was. We actually asked them like, hey, like what's what's going on? They weren't even able to like give us intelligible English. Like we didn't even know what they were saying. It was, and then we were reading about it later on, and there was just like, there was no reason for it. There was really wasn't. It was just like it, if it was really, really, really weird. It was super, super weird. It had nothing to do with the gaming event that we were at. It had nothing to do with anything, and they were um, just deciding to make everyone's day worse. But hey, it happens, I guess. Um, there's good reasons to protest, but for whatever reason, <laughs> they picked that it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know, like. If you're going to protest, there's so many things to protest, I think. Like, whatever they did, there is no reason. Uh, Dexter, Cozy, myself, OJ, we were all, like, in that hotel and just, uh, I think Dexter and Cozy probably woke up way earlier. I think Dexter kept getting woken up at 4 a.m. Oh, you went to BlizzCon? Dang! Yeah, yeah, if you guys ever see me at BlizzCon or any of these events, always go up to me, please. That'd be super cool. That doesn't happen where I live. Yeah, I feel like different areas are better or worse. Uh, I remember Boston is like relatively safe. And then like if you ventured outside of the area that was pretty safe for me, uh, there were like a lot of shootings and stuff. And I was like, oh, wow. OK, that seriously sucks. So I think it's really dependent on where you are. But um, specifically in the California places that I've been, I have not enjoyed. <laughs> I broke my iPad because of this game says lime juice. Well, dude, uh, I feel like, you know, uh, when when you when you create too salty of lime juice, it is not a vibe. So, you know, you gotta you gotta ease off the salt. Whenever you're salty, you just take a break, and uh, you just don't play for a little bit. It's never worth breaking a device over a video game. Um, it, it's just it's meant to be fun, right? So if you're not enjoying it, just take a break. If you lose a lot of games in a row, maybe you just take a break and come back to it later, or maybe you just don't play if it's annoying you. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. I just wanted to let you know what I feel about it. Because, you know, I think uh, a lot of people take this game too seriously. It's just a game. It's just a crazy little mobile game, you know? You feel me, my guy? All right, poor Bomber's going to die a, a gruesome death. That's fine. Not like it even matters. I just didn't want to give him a King Tower activation. So I was like, ah, uh, let's just sack the Bomber. Are you in beef with Ian77? No, I'm not in beef with anyone. And I actually like Ian a lot, so I feel like that's just uh, a huge no for me, big dog. Lost a grand challenge to Mega Knight's Lime Juice? Oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> well, we'll get redemption for you, all right? We'll get redemption. We'll beat a Mega Knight player right now for you. Right quick, right quick. Got you. I got you, man. Also, this deck is really good against Mega Knight, if you guys are unable to tell. Uh, when you have the ability to dissect their pushes and force out Elixir, um, it's obviously very difficult for them to make anything meaningful. So our strategy here is to force the Mega Knight on the right and then just go Wallbreaker's Valkyrie on the left. I think we just win. Oh, evil bats. Oh, that's not good for me. That was really bad. Actually, maybe not. Maybe not that bad. Maybe not that bad at all, boys. Fire Spirit. Very cool. Very nice. And we win. Wow. As I said before, like, when you have a skill difference and you're running a Goblin Drill deck, you will likely just beat the opponent very, 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 very badly. Um, at least when there's a bigger skill disparity, uh, you won't have a close, fun, action-packed games that you will have with Lovehound. So I think what we're going to do until we get up a little bit higher, I don't think we're going to play any more Goblin Drill games. Because these games are really boring for me. Um, probably pretty, I don't know, easy for you guys to know that I'm going to win. Easy for me to know that I'm going to win. So we'll play a few more decks that I'm not very competent with or decks that I'm not as good with. Uh, and we'll have fun with them and test them out and see if, you know, we can say, hey, the deck is good or not. Because it's nice to play the top ladder decks and see if the top ladder player that's using it is only doing really well because they've mastered the deck. Or if it's good, if you can just pick it up and play it for the first time and you're like, hey, it's pretty good. I don't know. I'm excited to see, uh, excited to see some other decks though. 
All right, so the Lava Hound deck was obviously uh, very, very strong. Um, it's just like not as good lower on as you can get card countered. Um, I, I don't know about the Sparky deck. This is also played by a top ladder player. It was played by someone in the top 10-ish, I believe. Yeah, somewhere around here. I forgot where. <laughs> He's top 30, top 30-ish. Thoughts on Evo Zap? Evo Zap is really strong. The fact that it can kill a lot of Dark Goblins, Firecrackers, stuff like that is great. Super, super, super good. All right, we're going to go Goblin Giant right in the face of the Firecracker because I can. And we're going to Zap. And I think we're in a winning position already. I think the Dark Goblin, um, or he's not going to have Dark Goblin. He just loses. Oh, another Mega Knight player. What the heck? I thought all these guys didn't exist anymore. I thought they were gone. Anyway. Little Prince popped the ability. Knock the Mega Knight back. Aww. And hit my Little Prince. What the heck? That sucked. I guess we want to drop it a little bit later, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, do you think it's worth any Minor Poison? Minor Poison is the best deck in the game right now, probably. It's, it's always been one of the better decks. It's not the best right now. Gr Drill is definitely better, but um, Minor Poison has always been worth playing. It has always been worth playing. Unless they decide to nerf Poison, but then you can just use Rocket or something else. They would have to nerf Minor again, and I don't think they're going to do that. I really doubt they would nerf Minor again. If you were in charge of fixing Firecracker, what would you change? Nothing. I think Firecracker is fair and balanced now. Firecracker was not fair and balanced for a while. It actually used to do 800 damage across the river, just like the Evo Bomber. So that was why I was really surprised that they would ever add Evo Bomber into the game as broken as it was. Because we had that issue with Evo Firecracker, but they just didn't care. I guess they just wanted to make money or something. I don't know. Uh, but the Evo Bomber really shouldn't have ever been that strong. All right, cool. Uh, we're just gonna go in for our Evolved Archers and we win. So this deck seems like pretty effective at demoralizing the opponent. How can you improve? I'm stuck at top 10k. Well, if you're stuck at top 10k, what you gotta do is you just gotta keep playing a lot with uh, the same deck and looking at your mistakes. Uh, and if you don't understand your mistakes, ask a friend that's better than you to look at your mistakes. Called off work to watch you, says Velocity. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for stopping by the stream and being a part of it. Um, hopefully, you know, you're able to enjoy this. I will probably be streaming for around an hour and a half today. Maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter. Who knows? What deck are you using? I'm using a Sparky deck. Sparky deck is very, very strong. I think Evil Bats are like an S tier card right now. They function extremely well with other evolutions. Also, I do think that the Sparky deck is great in the Mega Knight players. Just because they overcommit, they lose their Mega Knight, and they just lose the game. If this guy already lost, he would just kite his Mega Knight into our Sparky, and he's just dead. Like, you can't do that, I'm pretty sure, man. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. He doesn't have Elixir for the Mega Knight. All bait cards die to the Archers, and this should be game. So as you can see, opponents that decide to play like that do not deserve to beat us, so they lose. Sparky's going to hit the tower regardless, so I don't have to do anything. He might have even lost the Firecracker. Firecracker didn't walk into the Sparky shot, unfortunately. We can activate King Tower here with the Little Prince if we want to. Go and do it. And then we're in a great spot. We can go for bats. We can go for goblin giant. And there's a lot of different things that I can do right now. I think we go in for goblin giant here in the middle and try to take a second tower. And then we try to defend with goblins. And just zap on the spear goblins. Actually, screw it. We're going to zap here so we don't lose our goblins. I could have done more damage to him, but I didn't want to lose another tower. Oh my gosh, that little prince. That little prince is punishing this man. Holy heck. Looks like we're three crowding today. <laughs> oh man, I did not think I was going to be three crowding like that. Gigantic Titan is his name. Have you tried Clash Mini yet? If so, thoughts? Uh, I haven't played Clash Mini in a while. so Can't really give you feedback on something that I haven't played in a while. I feel like that's not fair to the game. However, I love auto chess games. And the reason why I haven't played it is I, I value my time like at a pretty high level. Uh, well, just really high in general because, you know, think about it from this perspective. I don't have that much time in life and I want to make sure that I'm doing things that I enjoy. And I also want to do things that are beneficial to the YouTube channel. So to spend time on like Clash Mini, it's not really benefiting the YouTube channel that much. It's not really benefiting us because we don't know if it's going to go live or not, or if it's going to go global. And because of that, um, I've just been staying away from it. It's not that I dislike the game. It's just, I mean, I played Wild Rift, if you guys remember that. 
and then they just decide not to market or not care about it. And uh, I spent a lot of money trying to like create content. I think I spent thousands of dollars. Um, and then the, video, the, the games just didn't do very well. And unfortunately, even though the content quality was really high, the peak viewership that I could get would never cover my bare minimum spent on videos. So it wasn't sustainable for me to do that. Um, so same thing with Clash Mini. I don't want to create content on a game where I'd be losing money and also losing time when I could be playing more Clash Royale, which I really do enjoy still, and creating an opportunity where we can continue to grow the channel. Obviously, as soon as there's a new game from Supercell that comes out that I enjoy, I'm going to be creating a lot of content on that. Um, and I'm just kind of waiting for that to happen. We haven't seen a new game that I actually like, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to see what, um, what happens from that perspective. Hopefully there's some good ones. All right, so we're just going to be able to go in for bats here and then probably get some nice value. It'd be hard for him to clean everything up. Especially if we can kill the Tesla and then have the Sparky still shoot, which is exactly what happens. Even if he delivers, that gets another shot, so huge value. Knowing those type of interactions, make sure that you don't overcommit with the Zap for no reason. It's like really, really important. Uh, we're going to go Archers again in the back. One of the better f benefits of running Archers is you can cycle them pretty indecisively, just splitting them in the back and being okay. Uh, the fact that you've got bats and archers means that you've got ample anti-air defense. Really nice. Replace Zap with Rage. Uh, it's viable. Well, this is the version that the top ladder player is playing. This is the version that the best player in the world is using with this deck. So I agree that Rage could work pretty well with the deck. But for all intents and purposes of playing the deck as intended by the better player, the player that is better than you and I, um, that... I'm just going to be playing in Zap. I'm going to be using Zap. You can also use Evo Zap instead of Archers or Bats if you want it. Um, and that, that works pretty well too. Are you going to upload TFT, I suppose, when you're a higher rank? I haven't had time to play TFT recently. Um, I played a bit yesterday, and I played a bit before, and I went second, first, first, first. And I'm Emerald 2 right now. But uh, I want to get higher than that. I want to be able to hit like Grandmaster or something if I'm going to create content. Also, one of the issues with TFT is the sets change all the time. So I don't know if I have the time to learn the new set when it comes out. So I'm kind of scared from that perspective. I thought about it more, I don't know, realistically. And I realized that it's going to be harder for me to create content. Whereas Clash Royale, the game doesn't change that much. Um, like it does change, but the core game, like I know all of the cards. I know all the interactions. I spent the time to memorize things. Um, it's generally going to be a bit easier for me to continuously create Clash Royale content. Uh, I still play TFT a lot on the side. It's a pretty fun game when I have the free time. But at the same time, it's like not necessarily as viable for me to create content off of. If that makes sense. If the game is consistently changing at all points in time. It's like if Clash Royale decided to have balance changes. Um, like, I wish Clash Royale was a happy medium between TFT and where it is now. Where Clash Royale would have balance changes like once a month. I think that'd be really cool. Instead of having it once every two months. And then if there's something like absurdly broken, like Evolve Skeletons, you should nerf them immediately because then that would make the game a lot better, right? Um, so TFT, like they change the entire cards. Every card gets changed every like four or five months, which is like, wow, that's a huge difference. Yo, uh, Patrick Castro says, I really like your videos. Binging tag is how I start my morning. Thank you and your team for all the great content. Thank you, man. Also, if you guys didn't know, I did upload a second channel video on my second channel called More Tag. If you guys want to see a full-length Clash Royale video, I did upload a brand new one on More Tag. If you guys want to see that, feel free to type in More Tag on YouTube, and it should pop up. I did that this morning uh, because I was planning on live streaming. All right, so we're in a pretty good spot. We can definitely go in for our bats here and then fireball on the Little Prince and probably just win the game. Do we just win? I think we win. Should be game. Goblin Giant locking on his tower like that means the game should be over. Uh, this is also one of the few downsides of playing a deck like this is like you will win games very, very fast. One thing that I'm going to do right now is something that y'all probably already know. Um, we can activate King Tower here against the Firecracker. And then we can probably get away with uh, nothing else. I'm just going for another Goblin Giant afterward. Because the Mortar dies. And then he has to deal with the Goblin Giant. I mean, we could drop it with a Little Prince. I don't really care that much. I'd rather cycle a Sparky and then Goblin Giant at the river. Oh, he's got Dark Prince. What the heck? Why does this guy have Dark Prince with the, the, the Mortar? What? Okay, well, we can go Goblin Surround or we can go Goblin Giant. I think Goblin Giant is a lot better. 
Could have waited a little bit on that, honestly. That's fine. Yeah, I should have waited a little bit. Goblin Giant's gonna force out cannon. We kill the knight. That's gonna be five five elixir wasted from our guy. So I think we can go in for goblins or something on the other side on the left. We can also go archers. There's a lot of different distinguishing things that I can do right now. Wait, is that oh no no, it's not gonna hit the tower. There's no way. Go bats here. Probably this fireball. Definitely a fireball now. 100%. I'm not going to hit the little prince or the uh, firecracker, but it's okay. Doesn't matter if I hit the firecracker or not. We're still in a pretty good spot. I don't think zapping that. I think I eat the, eat the firecracker hit. It's only one, it's not two. The evolved mortar dying there is pretty gigantic for us. Like, that is very, very good. If he dark princes, we can kite it with the goblin giant. And we'll also soak up the mortar shots with the goblin giant as well. So, this is pretty big. Oops. Wow, wait, wait, wait. I messed that up. <laughs> That's pretty sad. Hey, it happens, I guess. Oh, no. I missed it. That's rough. Can we please not play against someone with a Dark Prince in their deck with Mortar for whatever reason? Like, why do you have Dark Prince? I know it's not good for me, but why do you have it? <laughs> uh, use this poison, so he's gonna Dark Prince on this. So we have to go Evo Bat to make the prediction. Fireball on top of the Firecracker. Did I miss again? I think I did. No, I didn't. All right, we win. Nice. So I'm surprised that we were able to beat someone with a Dark Prince randomly in the deck. But I guess Evo Bats and Evo Archers do a lot of damage, and the Evo Bats definitely won us the game. So the reason why we won that is because he went for the Dark Prince that was really predictable on top of the, the evil archers, because he had to kill the evil archers. And then I was like, wait, we can use that as a mechanism of healing up our bats past full health. And then we got high health bats in his face, and he just lost. That was really cool. All right, we can go for a Sparky here. We're going to lose a lot of damage to this Goblin Giant, but it's fine. Uh, can I be your first man when you marry? Uh, dude, I don't even know if I'm going to get married. Like, I'm not sure. Um, like, that type of stuff, uh, I have no, no, I have, I have literally no idea on that stuff, man. The one thing that I do have ideas for is like I totally, totally, totally want to be able to enjoy life to the fullest and whatever mechanism that means, whatever, having kids, not having kids, doing all those things, I have no idea. Like, uh, I don't really have a full scope on what I want to do yet. I do know that I want to travel the world a little bit more. I really, 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 truly want to be able to create the best content that I can. And with those goals in mind, um, those are my main goals. Those are by far my main goals. And everyone should have different goals in life, you know? Um, whether that's having kids early and enjoying that and enjoying uh, seeing the world from another person's eyes and watching them grow up and experiencing things for the first time. Like, that's really fulfilling feeling for a lot of people. Um, for me, I don't know if that would be. Um, and I do know, like, the guaranteed things that would make me happy. Um, those are the things that I'm going to be pursuing. Um, so everyone has different... Uh, Everyone has different utility functions, and you got to maximize those and have fun how, how, uh, how it is for you, you know? You got to enjoy what you like in life. All right, we're to Fireball here. I think we just win. I mean, I've said that a lot, and I haven't won sometimes, so we'll see. You're so positive. You make me strive to try harder every day. Yeah, man. I, uh, one of the things that I've realized is you either create the things that are meaningful for you every single day, and you do things that are meaningful that make you happy, or someone else will figure that out for you. That, that's kind of how it is, right? Whether it's uh, friendships, relationships, partnerships, or even work, right? Like, let's extrapolate that into multiple things. Uh, with partnerships or friendships, if you don't say, hey, I want to do this, sometimes they'll just figure it out and they'll be like, I want to do this. And then you're just kind of doing it. You're going along with it. You're not, really pa you're not really figuring out your future. You're not really figuring out what you enjoy. Maybe you just enjoy spending time with the other pre people or friends. That's fine. But um, for me personally, I like having purposeful interactions where I actually really enjoy the activities as well um, with whatever I'm doing with wh whoever I'm with. Um, also, another thing that I thought was pretty cool is, uh, oh, we might be dead. Can I defend this? All right, we're, we're in a good spot. Um, let me just go goblin down here. But uh, yeah, you can, you can have that happen and you aren't necessarily, um, in my opinion, if, if that's the interaction that you have, you aren't necessarily getting as much as you possibly could out 
from life. I feel like things could be a lot better if you have a healthy compromise or you decide things that you enjoy as well. Um, I think that's pretty important. Um, oh man, this game is actually going to be really hard. Also, like with work, like let's say you are working a 9 to 5. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just someone else is dictating your future and deciding like what you're doing. It's pretty hard to break out of a 9 to 5, but a lot of times, you know, like people will get forced into doing things that they don't want to do in their job, um, which is kind of tough for a lot of people to handle or do. Like it's not necessarily like the most fun mechanism being told what to do by a boss. And then you're like, oh man, I really don't feel like doing it today. But you have to. Um, yeah. I mean, so that's why I feel like I'm in a very privileged position where I'm able to be kind of my own boss and uh, create content the way I enjoy. So I just wanted to uh, say like that's a big thing that I really value is like figuring out the things that I enjoy in life and trying to maximize and do those as much as I can. Um, you can't do that in every aspect of life. Maybe you're not going to be able to, you know, get a job where you can dictate everything because that's like super lucky and privileged. But maybe you can do that in other aspects of your life, you know? All right, let's keep going. One thing that I've realized is like, oh man, like when I was younger, I pretty much played life super, super passively, right? So let's like take a uh, Clash Royale example. If you're playing super passive until double elixir, sometimes it's fine because you're like striving towards a goal. Maybe you're leveling up and you're, you're doing classes at college or classes in high school. And everything's going super well, right? So you're leveling up until you hit double elixir. And then when you're double elixir, you spam your gold in the back and then you, you, you have a huge advantage to capitalize on that and you win the game or you win life, right? That's fine. But sometimes there are people that play passively in an entirely different route. You know what they do? The first card that they see in their hand, they just drop at the river. That's uh, kind of like, you know, life getting decided for you and you're just playing passive because you can't make a decision. You default to fireballing at the bridge, right? You default to going in for the first card that you see at the river every single time. And that's not the way that I would ever want to live life. Um, I think if you're playing with a purpose and you have a game plan, whether it's in Clash Royale or real life, I think that's generally a little bit better. Um, so that's, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's an extreme example, but... You know, like, I think the people at Clash Royale that play extremely well, they're thinking multiple steps ahead. They're always playing with purpose. They're like, oh, um, like right now in this matchup, since we're playing against Expo, our win con is getting a Sparky Goblin Giant pushed together. And if our opponent goes in for a Sparky when I, or sorry, when they go Expo and I don't have a Goblin Giant to tank, I will let the Expo lock into my tower. I will Sparky. The Sparky will kill the Expo. Then I'll Goblin Giant afterward, and then I'll take their tower. Like having a game plan like that is pretty impactful, knowing what you can and can't do. We're gonna go bats here, and then we'll Little Prince as soon as we possibly can because that will be able to lock on the Expo and the Archer Queen. Having a game plan uh, kind of sets you up for success mentally and uh, just puts you in a position where you're probably gonna be a bit more successful. Um, that skeleton's dead, so that's great. Jake, I have your autograph. Oh, really? I mean, I only signed a few things. Um, I think I signed a few things in. Ooh, the Clash Royale World Finals in 2020, and then the Clash Royale Finals last year, but I, I think I only signed two or three things in Helsinki. Not many people went to Helsinki just to watch Clash Royale World Finals. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, not easy to get there, you know? All right, we're going to Archers, because that should be able to kill. And let's go Bats. He fireballs, he just loses. Yeah, he has. I was going to say, if he fireballs the right side, he just loses. He's fine there. Go Sparky again. Let's just run it back. It's unlikely that this guy is going to be able to defend this because it is so difficult. It's really, really hard to stop this stuff. I think you have to be a pretty good player to be able to know that you're able to... St oh my gosh, why is he fireballing that? That's crazy. He's really wild. That Sparky might hit that tower. Oh, if it did, he lost. Oh, I still think he lost, to be honest, but he would have lost even harder, you know? It's not like he can expo. Oh, he's going to try. It's not good, though. He logged as well. That's just terrible. I mean, Evo Skeletons might bail him out. I hope not, though. It should lock onto the uh, Sparky. Nice. We're currently still winning the game by a little bit, but not by much. 
can go for a little prince here. We can cycle archers and split them. We'll probably go expo, honestly. Pretty surprising to not see an expo, honestly. Might fireball left. No, he fireballs left for sure. That's fine. It doesn't kill the Sparky. Go bats early. We have evil archers. Fireball the cannon. As you guys already know, we want to get that out of the map as soon as possible so the Goblin Giant can lock tower. If it does, we probably win game. Yep, we win the game. That's all we need. That amount of Spear Goblin chip damage is pretty crazy. We can go evil archers here. Click the ability. Goblin Giant. Evil bats. We knew he's going to log, so we don't want to mess with it that much. Sparky. We're currently winning by 500 HP, so it's just kind of important to make sure that we don't throw. That's the only thing that matters. Not throwing the game. Fireball ball here. Goblin Giant afterward. He knows the game's over. He can't do anything. That was a good fireball, though. He does lose his Archer Queen. Sparky on the right because he's going to have to Expo there, I think. And he's going to... Ooh, Sinister Sparky uh, going in the right-hand side away from the, uh, the Expo. Just going to Fireball on this, get his tower as low as possible. We don't have to wait that long, so we can just go to the next game a little bit quicker. GG, definitely a good player, but not much you can do. Audio messed? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so sorry. During the games, if there's obvi obviously audio mess-ups, uh, I'm not going to be able to fix it. Like... I can't fix the audio mistakes or the audio issues during the game because I'm always going to be very focused. I appreciate the effort and the time that you put into your videos. I appreciate that you appreciate that, man. A circle of appreciation. You know what I wanted to do? I really wanted to start collecting Pokemon cards. But then I realized how oversaturated that is on YouTube. I also realized how much money that costs. It's a lot of money. It's kind of crazy. Also, why did this guy just decide to go in for a Lumberjack at the river? Ugh. That's disgusting. Spent so much elixir. But yeah, collecting Pokemon cards are something that I thought would be pretty cool. Uh, but I realized how much money that would cost. <laughs> what do you guys think? How bad is collecting Pokemon cards? I, I want to ask you guys that. I generally ask you all some questions every single stream. Um, I, I have to know. Audio problem? I switched the audio. I turned the audio off. Do you get nervous playing live streams? Never. I don't get nervous in Clash Royale. Do I get nervous in other things? Yes. I just don't get nervous in Clash Royale. I've played thousands and thousands of games. Um, I mean, I do get nervous on stage, actually, if I'm playing in front of uh, lots of people. Like, I got super nervous in the Blizzard tournament, actually, because I really wanted to win um, against Annie Fuchsia and then, like, just trying to uh, make sure that the show was entertaining for everyone. That was really hard. Um, I was super nervous during that. But I, I haven't really been nervous on live streams. So many better things to collect, says David McAndrew. I mean, hey, dude, hit me up with what, whatever you think is cool to collect. Do you remember Bakugan? Oh, yeah, 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 I do. Collecting Pokemon cards is a labor of love. Yeah. Pokemon isn't that bad if you have restraint. I pulled a top Giratina and Crown Zenith. Dude, that sounds sick. I feel like... Uh, I feel like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, whenever I watch people's uh, Pokemon polls, I'm like, I want to do this. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. I don't think I can afford to do this. <laughs> uh, Beyblades? Yeah, I did Beyblades when I was younger, too. That was pretty fun. I actually watched a lot. Um, all right. Let's, let's make sure we focus in this game. I'll read the comments after it because we're currently losing by quite a bit. And I don't think uh, I focused very much in this game so far. All right, so he used this fireball. Maybe we can make a big one-punch man push. I think we can one-push man him. I think we would one-push man him right now. Real quick. Wait, those are horrible bats. They just died to zap. If he um, doesn't cycle his bats at the right point, we can zap them out and they're just gone. And then we can evil fire or we can fireball on the, uh, the archers and everything's just dead. Wow, did we win? Did we actually just win off that? That's crazy. I mean, I don't know if we did, but maybe. All right, we did not just win off of that, but it was, it was a nice thought, you know? It was a plan. Wait, we can fireball here with the bats. I think we do take tower. Keep spamming. I need to fireball him, so. How much does fireball do? Oh, it's not enough. 
I lost. Allows. Fireball, uh, fireball zap does not do enough. If he hog riders me, I actually lose the game. Yep. At least. Oh! Oh, so close. If I had enough elixir for the zap, we would have beat him. No! <laughs> I'm going to anti-flex on him. Anti-flex, you don't have this. If you're spamming the ultimate champ emote, you don't have the 20 win. Oh, it's so sad. Whenever someone beats me with the ultimate champ emote, you just know that they've barely hit ultimate champion and they're flexing it on you. And you're like, no, if only I focused a little bit more. But it's fine. It happens. Audio gone again? Yeah, I'll turn the audio back. The audio is back. Imagine losing. I don't know, man. Uh, imagine losing, you said. Bro, imagine spelling losing incorrectly. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Oh, unless you actually meant to spell leucine. Imagine leucine. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. Uh, I always laugh when that happens. This is a winnable matchup. Yeah, the last game was very winnable. I just, you know, I wasn't very focused at the start. And he dropped Lumberjack Goblin Gang. And I wasn't really looking at the screen. I was kind of talking to y'all. But it's fine. I mean, hey, it happens. I don't really care that much. Oh. Uh. I haven't pulled anything crazy Pokemon-wise, but I played a Pikachu uh, tag team once. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool, man. I feel like um, the Charizard ones look really cool. I know those are mainstream. I want Snorlax. I think Snorlax looks awesome. Yeah. And we're doing a Beyblade stream? <laughs> I don't know about that one, Chief. You know Hunter? He said you're um, a good YouTuber, not a good player. Uh, I don't really know him that well. I beat him once in a YouTube video, um, but that was kind of like earlier season. Uh, everyone can have different opinions on whatever. You could also say I'm a trash YouTuber and a trash player. Like, it's fine. I don't really care. Um, that's the cool thing that uh, everything kind of happens that way. Like, you have your own, um, you have your own community. You find the own people that like you and I respect you. I'm glad that he likes my content though. I'm happy that he says I'm a good YouTuber. But yeah, that's just one of those things that. Uh, I truly just try to have fun whenever I play now. Why do you always look happy in every moment? Um, because I'm generally happy when I'm playing a video game. If I'm able to play a video game as a job, like it's pretty freaking awesome. It's hard to not be happy whenever you're playing a video game that you're enjoying. Uh, however, am I always happy? No, I'm not always happy. Uh, actually, yesterday I was kind of upset. I had a, uh, I was feeling bad and I was feeling a little bit sick and I was just like, man, I don't want to stream or do anything today. I just kind of want to relax and go to bed early. I, I did a workout, but that's all I did, you know? I just did a workout and kind of went to bed super early, and um, that's what happens, you know? Like, sometimes uh, sometimes you have great days, sometimes you have bad days. I mean, everyone's human, right? It's like, uh, you guys get to see me in one of my happiest moments. I get to play a video game, and I love it, so, you know? I, I also do try to be grateful, too. Like, it's, it's difficult to always be happy all the time, but it's easier to be happy when you understand, like, the good things that you have in your life and it can be as simple as like being like oh i'm pretty healthy right now if you're healthy and you're not sick right now then you can be appreciative of that there are a lot of people that are super sick um it's easy to get sick and it takes a lot of time to recover in some situations just make sure like if you have small things that you can be grateful for try to be grateful for those things or if your family is like in a really good spot where your your parents you like your family or they're just really nice to you a lot of people don't have parents or nice people that are, are in their life from the family department so a lot of things that people just do not appreciate that they could appreciate it's not that you're spoiled you just don't understand um if you haven't seen it or maybe you're in a bad spot in life and you it's harder to uh actually appreciate the good things around you because you see a lot of negatives and then it's easier to dwell on the negatives instead of being appreciative which happens a lot too but it's nice to just take a short I, I not break but like um, it's nice to really reflect on those things and recognize your situation and what you're in. A lot of times people don't really realize how good things are. Alright, hopefully we can win this game. I don't think I played this super well. These archers might not... And why does he have guards with a golem deck? Like, what? Hmm. Did I really just lose to guards golem? What is this? My guy? Okay, uh, this is interesting. It's kind of a counter. <laughs> no, if I fireball on the Night Witch, that would have been huge. All right, at least he doesn't have arrows back in cycle.
There's no way, right? Oh my goodness. This is not a deck. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> There's no way I matched into this. This is a firecracker deck with a golem. I can't win, so kind of unfortunate, I guess. But that's 100 0. That's actually a 100 0 matchup. So I guess we're going to go back to the, uh, the firecracker, or not the firecracker. We're going to go back to drill for a little bit because we did lose a couple matchups that were just kind of un honestly. This one was unwinnable. This one's unwinnable. I don't know, I don't know how we match into a lightning, uh, lightning guard stack. Uh, that's just crazy. That's literally crazy. With also arrows for our bats. And then um, Firecracker that we can't kill. That matchup is horrendous. Um, this game was fine. I should have won that, actually. Um, we'll play one more with the Sparky deck because I feel like it shouldn't have lost the, the first game. I should have just played better. Should have focused a little bit more. Uh, the Golem game, there's nothing I could do, though. <laughs> that was crazy. Um, you can't imagine how many fans you have in my country. Dude, I honestly can't imagine how many like people I have and viewers that we have in the community that watch me on a daily basis. Like, it's seriously insane to picture, like, wow, there's 100,000 people that watch just each video every day. That's really ridiculous. You put that in perspective, it's like, I don't know, man. That's, it's more than I deserve. It's more than I ever thought would be possible. It's, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. And that's why I love seeing you guys in person. If you ever do see me, um, definitely make sure to say hi, no matter where I am. No matter where I am or what I'm doing, if you guys see me in person, definitely say hi. Magic the Gathering is fun. I'm looking forward to some Outlaws coming soon. Yeah, dude, card collection is really fun. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! pretty competitively. I actually like went to tournaments and stuff. That's pretty fun. Anyway, we're going to fully focus in this game. I think we're in a decent spot to go Goblin Giant at the river with bats. Maybe this is dumb. We'll have to wait and see. That doesn't seem bad. We can probably Fireball here. Probably kill the Knight and the uh, Little Prince. And then we will lock Tower with the Spear Goblins. It's a huge value. And we can just go goblins afterward. I don't want to activate King Tower with that. It doesn't make that much sense to. Uh, he wasted some elixir. We're in a really good spot. What state do you live in? Right now, I'm in Washington. I'm in Seattle, Washington. I'll be in Cali next year. Let's so meet up. Dude, if there's ever like a uh, if there's ever a specific like gaming event or anything, I'll generally be there. Whether I'm sponsored to go or I just go on my own accord. Um, PAX West, I go to every single year. Um, so definitely, if you guys are at PAX West, let me know. Um, if you guys are, you know, at BlizzCon when I get sponsored to go, it's pretty fun. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things. It'd be super, super cool to see you guys at these events. At least I personally would love to see you guys there. All right, we're running it back with Golem, but this time his Golem deck makes sense, so he's not going to win. <laughs> you know how weird that is? It's like, if your Golem deck makes sense, you won't beat me. <laughs> Your deck needs to make slightly less sense, my guy. Oh, that's kind of funny. Alright, we're going to spam everything that we have here on the right. We should just win. Pretty much impossible for him to defend that. He definitely made it uh, a big mess up, and he deserved to lose. And also, his deck made sense. So that was the, that was the main issue, you know? <laughs> he didn't have the tech. My guy did not have the tech. He really needed the guards lightning with a, uh, you know, firecracker evolution to beat this. <laughs> the fact that that was even a thing is scary because firecracker is really good when you're able to keep it alive with hog riders and cycling a lot of them, right? But it's so bad if you're having a slow and clunky deck like Golem. Like, I think he found, like, the one situation where the freaking firecracker golem actually works better than the regular golem. He literally found the only matchup where that works better. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny, though. Anyway, great, great Sparky deck. I would really recommend playing this if you guys aren't that good of the game. Phenomenal deck. Phenomenal deck. Oh, your autograph is on the quarter mil hoodie. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. I did sign those. That was interesting. That was a while back. Um, we did some like uh, we did we did some like marketing for it too, and they made me uh, they threw the hoodie at me. Or sorry, my ex threw the hoodie at me, and it hit me in the face like four or five times before I was able to actually get a good shot that worked for the uh, for the video. It was pretty funny. Um, I could not like sign it quick enough, and I couldn't do it fast enough that it looked good. 
Uh, we eventually got a good one. But that was kind of funny. That, that's, that's a good memory where you like mess up signing so often. You feel like a fool. Like, oh man. New deck time. Uh, you said we do a couple? Yep, yep. The, uh, new deck right now. Um, this is a great deck. I'll show really quick afterward like what it is. Uh, it's... So this is a Skeleton Barrel Mortar deck that has Mortar Evolution and it has Firecracker Evolution. Generally, you're going to be spamming Mortars and Firecrackers and just be super, super annoying. It's a, it's a great deck to play. It's also ranked 30 in the world right now. I forgot you lived in Seattle. You can mess up... Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I would never egg someone's house. Uh, I feel like some of my friends have done that before. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm not a huge fan of that. Make sure to drop a like, says Alex Jones. Yeah, dude. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed today's stream. Uh, it allows me to do these streams more consistently. And it supports me for free. So definitely drop a like if you guys are enjoying the stream today. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. Oh, we are back at it again with another Mega Knight player. Dang, man. You guys are <laughs> really Mega Knighting out here. Truly a Mega Knight player of all time. Terrible arrows. He doesn't kill the Goblin Gang, and then he loses everything. And then we can go in for a Skeleton Barrel, and we probably win. Um, I think like sometimes people will mess up like that, and I just feel bad for them because it's like you think that it's a good opportunity to arrows there. I probably would have as well if like I really annoyed, got annoyed by Firecracker because you want to hit the tower. But if you do that, you're just in a horrible position where now you have to deal with a Mortar. You don't have that much Elixir on you. And it's just, it starts to cost pretty heavily. Oh my gosh, we're going to get evil wall breakers out too? That is so lucky for me. Like genuinely, I'm getting very, very lucky. And then I can knight on top of the archer queen. And he's probably going to go for the mega knight. So let's try to go goblin gang other side and try to force elixir on both sides. It's going to be way harder for them to defend now. In fact, I think I can firecracker and hit the mega knight and jump onto the tower too. I think I played that really, really well. Oh, they even gave us a well played. What a nice person. You know, this is really cool to see someone like this. This doesn't happen very often. Usually I don't play against people that are this nice. Most of them just like spam a whole bunch of like angry emotes whenever we're winning. Or just like spam like mean stuff when they beat me. <laughs> Usually you get the goblin laugh or the me me me. Me me me. This is not a me 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 player. So, I have a nice person. I love to see it. All right, we're going to go for a Skeleton Barrel here, and then the Mortar Box Tower. We can go for a Knight, and the Mega Knight does not jump. Wait, how is the Firecracker still alive? Does anyone know? This is crazy. GG, and good luck. I don't know why it's so strong. Uh, Well, it comes across, so you have to play Mega Knight. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, it's a girl. Of course she's nice, LOL, says Chloe. Hey, I think that sometimes girls are really mean to the... So, I haven't really experienced it that much. Like, girls have never really been that mean to me. But, uh, my friends that are girls have been like... You know, girls, when they fight with other girls, a lot of times, uh, like, they're, they'll be a bit more sneaky with the things that they do and say. And uh, a little bit more vicious. Like, guys will just be, like, mean to someone, like, right to their face. I think sometimes girls would be a bit more vicious and mean behind each other's backs. Uh, so like, that's the type of stuff that I'm like, oh, it's not always true. It's not always accurate. But I, at least like, you know, I, I would like to say that not every single girl is nice, you know? <laughs> also, shout out to that one girl with the, uh, if you guys remember, uh, she literally, oh, what, what did she do? She freaking knocked a, uh, a mirror off of a car when she was extremely rich. And after knocking the mirror off the car, she decided, hey, I'm not going to leave a note on the car. So that was one of the dates that I went on a while back. And she literally knocked a mirror off the car and then thought it was a funny enough story to tell me in front of an entire restaurant full of people. I was just sitting there. I was like astonished that she would say that, admit to it, and also do that when she was like very, very rich. Not every girl is nice. Not every girl is nice. But, you know, generally. Um, I think sometimes guys can be uh, pretty aggressive and not necessarily very nice, too. It, it, there's a lot of not very nice people in this world. It's the, it's the main thing that we're going to say. All right. I think, that's, I think that's a reality. There's also a lot of really nice people as well. That's the cool thing that I've learned about from the Internet, right? 
there's a lot of really mean, awful people that spam really awful things on, you know, different social media platforms. It's horrendous to like spend time there. It's like brain rot. Oh, I just misclicked my mortar. Um, but yeah, it's not ideal when that happens. Oh, I just missed. I, I think I lose. I misclicked the mortar, so I shouldn't be able to win this. We'll see. That mess up was huge. Yeah, I should lose off of that, honestly. Yeah, at least. Sometimes that happens where you misclick really hard. Uh, I didn't even drop that. Still winnable, maybe? I have to try very, 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 very hard now. AKA drop a, fire, a firecracker down the middle and hit a unit. Wait, this is good. This is actually not even bad. I'm not even capping right now. Not even that bad. Maybe it's terrible, actually. Imagine all the sparkies. I mean, there's still a chance. Just very limited at this point. I really, really threw this game, guys. My bad. <laughs> I think we'll get to 15 wins and stop today. Uh, we will play this deck for a couple more games. We'll get to 15 with it. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't play well. I, I literally misclicked. I don't know why I dropped the mortar there. I would have been fine. I would have been fine. My mom told me I was in elementary. Someone yanked my arm and I smacked him. <laughs> Yo, you're wild. Yo, I played uh, flag football when I was younger. And our fr my friends are like, Yo, what if we just did tackle when the teachers aren't watching? We did tackle. We started like jumping and knocking each other over in the mud. And um, yeah, the teachers turned around. They're like, why are you guys all filthy? What happened? We're like, uh, we're, we're playing football. <laughs> They, they were not amused. They sent us all to the principal office and uh, it was not ideal. One of the funniest moments of my life was uh, the principal um, was friends with my dad. So in elementary school, sometimes I got sent to the principal for like really dumb things like that. And he's just like, Jake, just go back. Like, just, just go back. <laughs> he just like sent me back. He's like, I don't, you don't have time for this. So I didn't really do anything that bad. But like, you know, we did tackle tackle football and we no one got hurt or anything. It's just like like bro, it's okay. He was like the most chill principal I've ever seen in my life. I loved him. But also probably because he liked me. So oh, that's funny. My friends did that in middle school? Yeah, we thought we were sinister. We thought we were sinister. Oh, have you guys have you guys ever played Manhunt when you were younger? That's called like uh, it, essentially like you tackle someone and there's bases and you have to get to your opponent's base to score a point or something. But if you get tackled along the way, then you have to reset or you get captured. I don't know. I forget the rules, but they involve tackling. And so many kids broke their arms doing that with us. Uh, it was really fun. I, I, I think that was one of my fondest memories growing up. I did not break a bone. I did not break a bone, but I did do uh, Manhunt a lot. Manhunt at night was goaded. Dude, it was. It was S tier, man. It was S tier. Manhunt, cops and robbers, octopus. I've never played octopus. I don't know what that is. Anyway, it looks like this game will be a win because I'm not misclicking a mortar. So <laughs> we take those. We take those. This Valkyrie's going to hit my mortar, I think. No, it didn't. We're chilling. This is a terrible Tesla. What's that supposed to do? Little Prince ramps up his attack speed, kills everything. We're fine. Yeah, we win this. I mean... This is a really bad deck on his end. I've never understood why people throw in a bandit in some decks. Like, Royal Giant is meant to be the win condition. So if you have cards that don't synergize with the Royal Giant, it's really hard to make the deck work. Like, his deck does not work. The Royal Giant is the way that you're supposed to win. And you have all these other weird cards that don't function with it. So, I mean, hey, it makes sense, like, if you want to have fun. But the deck is bad. Um, Yeah. Generally, people will do stuff like this, and you look at their deck, and you're like, but why? Why you do this to yourself, sir? And now he has to defend against two mortars, and a skeleton barrel, and a firecracker. This game is over. GG. All right, cool. I mean, the, the thing, the rhyme and reason behind why this deck works is you're able to spam pretty aggressively with skeleton barrels and mortars, and then you can eventually get a firecracker to lock on a tower. Have you ever played Evolve Firecracker and Evolve Bomber in the same deck? I have when you guys made me. It's really bad, though. It's a, it's a terrible deck decision. 
You don't want to play decks that have overlapping cards. It's like playing a wizard and electro wizard in the same deck and thinking that it'll work well. You have two cards that function in the same capacity and you want to be cycling other cards to have a more adaptability. Like let's say you end up having a firecracker and bomber and you drop them both at the same time. Well, what happens? Or like you have them both in your hand, your opponent spams a bridge bam card like a bandit. Sure, you can sacrifice one of them and then like it will stay alive a little bit so you can cycle back to another thing. But like, let's say you've got like firecracker, um, bomber, a Tesla, and then something else. It's just like, you have sometimes really awful hands. Ooh, I didn't mean to jump into a ladder game. I guess we're playing a ladder game right now. My bad. Um, after we get out of this ladder game, we'll go back to uh, normal gameplay. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Sorry for the intermission. All right, we should be able to one-shot that with a firecracker and then a mortar. Skeleton Barrel is probably going to give us some nice damage. I'll eat the Royal Ghost, I think, because I need to. If we log, does it die? I don't think so. It's two shots, though, right? Pretty cool. As you can see, like, uh, generally with this deck, you're going to be playing really aggressive with mortars. You can play aggressive with other stuff that can, and you're actually one tap it, so I don't have to spend any extra elixir. I've been a substance blast shard bowler. Oh, nice. Free ladder game? Nice. Yeah. You guys get some extra content. I did not mean to do this. This is uh, an unintentional mess up. So, my bad. I haven't pushed ladder since I hit ultimate champion like two days ago with you guys. So, it's been a minute. I'm not going to pop ability. It doesn't make sense to. Uh, generally, you want to pop ability when you're able to use the Evolve Mortar. You don't want to pop ability because it slows your card cycle down. You'd rather cycle a regular Knight. The regular Knight is better than the um, Guardian anyway, so it doesn't make sense to do anything else. Oh, that's not going to hit the tower, but whatever. We can go Skeleton, bro. We, wasted, we made him waste his app. Can you play Mega Knight Wallbreakers and Archer Queen? Uh, I don't really like that deck that much. Um, it's not that fun to play. It's not that it's a bad deck. It's just not very fun. Oops, I messed this up. I know. All right, that should lock Mortar and then get two tapped by a Cannoneer. And then he's going to go in for... Wait, that gets pulled, I'm pretty sure. Oh, never mind. It's one more tile and then it gets pulled. Is he Electro Wizard? Bro, Ghost. Nice. Beautiful. That's really, really good for us. We should win off that, honestly. Yeah, I won. Nah, I'd win, says the Mortar. It's broken. We forced his app, too. Ooh, the Cannoneer killed it! Oh my gosh! I thought the, for sure the ghost would go undercover there. What the heck? Yo, that was the most unlucky ghost ever. That was really funny. All right, we'll firecracker here to add more insult to injury. Keep our mortar alive. Pop the ability because we want to kill the bandit. Usually I wouldn't do this, as I said before. Many times. Oh, I missed the fireball. Oops, I didn't. Never mind. We're the goblin gang here. Mortar on defense is generally pretty bad because you don't really want to be dropping it this low. If your opponent drops ba uh, Bandit and other Bridge Bam cards after they kill the Mortar, it'll be really close to your tower, but... Because I have Cannoneer, it doesn't matter that much. We can Evo Firecracker here. It should kill. And we can go Goblin Gang directly on the Royal Coast. Very nice! We win! Awesome. Pretty easy game, as you guys can see. This deck does function pretty well on Ladder as well. Um, if you have Cannoneer, I guess you would want to be running Cannoneer. It doesn't really matter that much, though. The log, we're gonna knock that back, and then we'll go for a knight, and everything's dead. GG! <laughs> my package came today, says Chloe. Uh, when did you get drunk for the first time? I've actually never been drunk in my life. I'm not even joking. I've never been drunk in my life, not even in college, which is kind of a crazy thing. But my grandpa died because of alcoholism, like, he just did not take care of himself. Um, so that was like a big thing for me. So I just decided not to drink very early on. And then I didn't really like the taste of it. So I was like, well, there's a net negative with someone in my like family dying because of it. And then also that, uh, and then health related stuff. I got super sick. So I was like, well, I can't drink when I'm sick. There's like a lot of things that just deterred me from doing it. And then when I was able to, like, you know, three years ago, if I wanted to, um, or now, I just decided I don't really want to. So I decided not to. So I just, I haven't done that. I don't really like the concept of getting drunk and not being able to control how you are. I feel like if you're around friends, it's fine, right? If you're around friends and you're drunk, it doesn't really matter that much because guess what? Like your friends will be able to take care of you, right? Maybe from a health standpoint, but if you're around people that you super, super trust, it's probably okay. But uh, yeah, for me, like, I don't know, especially like if you travel to Finland or if you travel to work events, there's a lot of drinks that I get for free, right? If I wanted to, there's like an open tab at Supercell or open tab at like all these parties when you're when you're an influencer and you go to parties they give you free alcohol that's just how it is 
I don't drink, so I just never have it. <laughs> so um, I, I, I also think like if you went to a lot of those parties and you drank there, you might leave a really bad impression if you're not a good drunk. If you uh, say things or do things inappropriately, or if you're just not necessarily like able to control your own actions at all points in time, um, just a risky thing to do around people that you're going to be working with. So I don't want to say anything stupid. I don't want to be like, you know, Supercell, you guys didn't <laughs> nerf the evolved skeletons. Imagine not nerfing evolved skeletons. You guys are all stupid. Imagine if I said that to a much worse extent, right? Imagine like if something like that came out of my mouth. I don't think it would, but I just don't trust it, you know? I don't want to. I don't want to pop off on them and be like the, the the dumbest drunk you guys have ever seen. Imagine. Oh, what would you guys say about the? What would you guys be like? Yo, you guys. Uh, you need to not put a twenty dollar book of books offer in the shop. You guys need to not do all this stuff. Why did you put Mega Draft in the game when I said not to? Like, imagine. Imagine if you just got like real heated. Oh, that would have been so bad. You can't be drunk around your friends, to be honest. Only the trustworthy ones? Yeah, of course. I became a comedian while drunk. Hey, I quit drinking for the same reason pretty much. Every time I got drunk, I ruined a relationship. LOL, says Henry. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't feel like uh, I would have ruined any relationships, but I feel like I would have probably ruined business connections. And like, also on top of that, it's just like, I don't know. I didn't see much benefit, so I was like... Cost-benefit analysis, definitely not in my favor, so I'm not going to do it. I didn't think the RG would get a hit there. That sucks. There's also non-alcoholic drinks as well. Oh, I love the non-alcoholic drinks. I um, When I was at Blizzard, because they're not allowed to have uh, alcohol because of their culture, if you guys know what Blizzard does like or what happened there, it makes sense. They had some pretty bad experiences with their CEO and drinking. So because of that, there no one there is allowed to drink. So... <laughs> Of course, this was my paradise. Everyone was looking at me and they're like, dude, why do you have so many why do you have so many small drinks? I'm like, dude, I can't do this very often. This is my this is where this is where I'm meant to be. And everyone started laughing at me. I was like, bro, don't laugh at me. Respect it. Respect it. Alright, we're dead. This this actually sucked. Alright, well, it happened, I guess. Uh we'll play a couple more games on our mini account. We'll win three games in a row and then we'll end the stream, alright? Unfortunate. Unlucky. <laughs> This is actually a pretty bad matchup because we don't have that much damage per second to kill the Royal Giant besides the Little Prince. And I think this guy was good enough to make predictions on the Little Prince and drop a Fisherman. Not necessarily a good matchup. Not a very nice guy. He's saying he's laughing at me, but hey, it happens. Sometimes you play against not nice guys that are good players with good matchups. Um, and that's exactly what happened there. So we lost out at 14. We did try somewhat. We didn't try super hard, <laughs> but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, all right, we're going to go and switch accounts really, 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 really quick. We'll win three games in a row, and then we'll end off that. I should have won the Hog Rider match uh, earlier for sure, but it is what it is. <sighs> Dude, water tastes so good. Not even a fib. All right, let's go here. Go to the top. I just dominate three people in a row. These games should not be very close. And instead of that, we put in guards because guards is the version that he was using. He doesn't use skeleton army. Nicola, thank you for the gifted sub. Ending after three games? Yeah, no, I get I get you guys three extra games. Three extra games today. How much water do you drink each day? Uh, quite a bit. I try to drink a lot of water. Water is a good to drink, especially after a day's work. Yeah, it's super healthy. It's really, really healthy. Do you do any sports? I play pickleball and tennis. Uh, it's Water or coconut water, though? Uh, I'm not drinking coconut water right now. I'm drinking regular water. It's regular water with some creatine in it. Okay, we don't want to have this Inferno Tower down. <gasps> what the heck? Oh my gosh. Wait, wait, wait. Best Bomber NA? Best Bomber NA? Best Bomber NA? Best Bomber NA? No, because he zapped. He screwed it. That's okay, though. We're still going to have a good day. With the best Bomber NA. Please. Bomber for the two-time. For the two time, hit the tower. No! It's okay. Sometimes it's meant to be rough like that, I guess. Usually we would activate King Tower, but in the face of that, I think we go in for the King Tower activation with the Valkyrie. No! Or an or. Wait, we're fine because the Valkyrie's able to hit both of them and then the guards piece apart the uh, Hog Rider from the side. Been watching your videos for two years. Love your tips and vids. Hey, I'm happy to hear that, brother. Thank you for supporting for so long. All right, Fire Spear, jump! 
Yeah, very nice. All right, looks like we win this one. Super cool stuff. We take those. Finn said, if a man takes a drink, the drink takes a man, says Crystal. Wow, I just read that without um even responding. Like, without even, like, pre-reading it. Usually, I pre-read your guys' comments in case something's, like, wildly inappropriate. Um, I'm glad that, I, uh, you know, we got something good. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> when I just read things that I don't actually pre-read it, some bad stuff happens. Thank you for the good comment. What's your max bench? Uh, two days ago, I did three reps of 45 plus 10s on each side. So I guess my max bench right now is three reps of 155 pounds-ish. I don't know how much it is. You guys can correct me, but 45s plus 10s, and I did three reps of those easily. Very easily. I think I could do more. And I, I don't know. Maybe I could do... Well, I could definitely do 15 on each side, but I haven't done that yet. I'll do that next time, I bench. Can you do a new champion's challenge, please? Uh, I don't think this deck has a champion. I'm pretty sure this deck doesn't have a champion. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, we're going to go for Evo Bomber up in here. Interesting zap. We're chilling. The downside of this deck is you don't have a spell, but as you guys remember, you do have Fire... Well, I mean, you do have Evo Bomber, so it can counter the Goblin Bro, if you guys remember what we did. I would have definitely gotten pretty, uh, pretty good here if we were able to use the drill deck the entire time. I would have been fine. Sir Tag got some muscle on you. Yeah, I got a lot of muscle on myself now, recently, um, compared to what I was before. I was still not a lot, but a lot more than I used to. What made you want to start a CR channel? Uh, I got really good rankings, so people wanted to watch me play. I'm 14, and I can only do 155 once. Well, I mean, that's really good for a 14-year-old. <laughs> I don't know, like, how much you should be benching when you're 14. Like, I feel like you probably shouldn't... Uh, at least I was told that I, I shouldn't be benching a lot, because I don't know if it stunts growth or something. I don't know. You, I, I think that's a dangerous thing for me to say when I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I would, like, look into, like, how much you should be benching or whatever when you're younger. Uh, especially, like, if it's not monitored by, like, uh, other people. That's one thing that I did. Um, I think, like, one of the scarier things, like, when you're younger, uh, if you take supplements and stuff and you're, like, super into working out, sometimes the stuff can be bad for you. you just be careful, I guess. Like, we, a lot of people get super, super hyped up on, like, I want to work out. I want to become the biggest I possibly can. And then they just do things that they shouldn't. Um, I think working out is fine, probably. But, um, yeah, just be careful with supplements that you take. Give us a flex. Ah, I mean, I'm wearing a hoodie right now, so. <laughs> and I also don't really do flexes like that. I feel like, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe you'll eventually see like a beach photo um, when I want to go to the beach, but that's about it. That's all you guys will ever see. That'll be on my Instagram whenever I uh, decide to post that. Probably a year from now, two years from now. Who knows? But yeah. Generally, what, what we try to do is like, I don't know. Try to keep everything not like that. I'm not a huge per a fan of like flexing or doing any of that stuff. Uh, most of the time, the progress for myself is just for myself, right? Like I really care about um, feeling good and being proud of the way that I look. And then, you know, it's kind of just for me, not really for the, uh, not really to flex on media or anything like that. I don't really get that much enjoyment from that. We're gonna go wall breakers here and then probably fire spirit and then Valkyrie. But yeah, we're in a good spot. Just trust that Tag is ripped. I'm not ripped. <laughs> I'm not even close to ripped, my guy. <laughs> uh. Do you take pre-workout? Nah, I don't take pre-workout. Turns everything into a life lesson. I'm not trying to. I just speak whatever I think. And then a lot of times, uh, that's what happens, I guess. I tell you guys things that I learned. Like, um, I don't know. I, I, I just had PTSD of a moment when... I decided to take like extra supplements and I like hurt my chest because I took a lot of supplements when I was younger. I was really fit. I was like, I want to get more fit. I want to have lower body fat percentage. And then I ended up taking supplements that like gave me chest pain. I was like, oh, I'm done with that. Uh, I just threw out the entire bottle. I, I took like two or three things of it. I was like, not ideal. So don't take supplements that, you know, you don't know are safe for you. I guess is the main thing. I did that like a while back, like when I was 17 or 18. I was really, really fit back then. I was actually ripped. Alright. Um, I think, like, one of the sadder things is, like, when you work out a lot, when you are extremely ripped like that, sometimes uh, you're never satisfied with where you are, right? So then you just keep trying to get bigger and better. 
every single time. It's not necessarily healthy. It's not a good mentality. All right, so I think we win. He's not going to stop that. That goblin hits him. GG. Good thing you stopped using it. Yeah, I stopped it immediately. <laughs> That's the reason why I, I gave you guys that like life lesson. I just want to give you feedback on why I said that, all right? Because I had an experience. Working out is hard when you have to balance uni and work. Well, anything is hard with university, man. Um, if you guys don't have to do work while you're at university, be extremely grateful for that. If your parents are paying for your university and you have disposable income that you make during the summer, that is like literally like the, li the life that you want. That is the best life that is just like incredibly cool. Being able to make money during the summer to have disposable income and having your parents pay for your college. Like there's so many people that have those positions that don't actually realize how lucky they are. It is unbelievably good. Um, if you have to balance university and work at the same time, your classes are going to be worse. Your your grades are going to probably be worse. Your work ethic will probably be better, but it's just going to, it's going to be hard. I think the thing is, like, if you are in your specific situation, my guy, um, look at it from a lens of, hey, my work ethic is getting better. Um, and, and that's a kind of a cool thing to, uh, to look at. I think, like, at least that's what I try to frame things as, like, it's kind of a messed up situation when you're in a bad spot, but like being able to say, hey, um, I, I think that when you're going through life and you're having bad things happen, right? Um, or more difficult things happen, it's preparing you for the future a bit. Like, you know how weights are not necessarily ever going to get easier for you to lift? Weights never get easier for you to lift. You just get stronger, right? And then the weights become easier to lift because you're stronger. Situations in life, they're the same as like lifting weights. You are going to deal with a lot of unfortunate situations in life. They aren't necessarily going to get easier intrinsically, but they're going to get easier for you to deal with when you have more of them to happen to you that you train on, essentially. When you have bad things happen and you get through it and you process it, it's kind of like lifting weights. You're able to deal with more problematic positions in life and process those things and get through it easier in life than other people. If someone's spoiled and they never had hardships in life, they can't really get through things very quickly. They're gonna get stuck on small things. They're gonna be like that, pe that, one, that one person that I remember very vividly. I can't believe my mom didn't pack me the right lunch and she was in college and I was just like, bruh, Alexis, what are you doing with your life for real? <laughs> Uh, you'll never be able to find her. I don't follow her. I don't know her anymore. But that person, um, that was so triggering. <laughs> uh, they literally were complaining about their mom not packing their lunch correctly. I was like, you know, that's probably not something to complain about. For real, for real. But yeah, if you guys uh, ever feel like... Uh, yeah, bad things are happening. Just realize, like, it's probably helping you become a better version of yourself to an extent. Or, like, it may be not all the time, but, you know, it is giving you strength. And you don't end up like that. You might think that you would never end up like that, but you, you honestly don't know. Your environment shapes you as a person. Well, maybe you wouldn't ever end up like that, but that's an extreme example. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like you might not be as strong or as in a good spot as you are mentally. And that shapes you and allows you to succeed in other ways. I can't tell you how many rich people or how many like really privileged people I've met that have just like super failed in life because they just don't have any motivation and they have had everything given to them and they have never had to try or do anything. There's a lot of people like that I met growing up. Super, super amount. All right, we're a fireball and win. That goblin should do enough. If not, it's fine. It's Evo Bomber time, boys. GG. You watch any bodybuilders? I don't watch any. Tommy gave me the wrong lunch. Wow, I know. <laughs> Parents packing your own lunch in college is crazy. I know, right? It's insane. It's actually certifiably insane. There's no way that it was real. <laughs> I was just like... <laughs> this is a joke, right? Uh, that's funny. All right, we're going to play two more, actually. It's because the, uh, they're ungrateful and they think they're... No, it's not like that. Uh, definitely not. I don't think that the person was 
feeling that they were superior to others at all. I just think that they haven't dealt with any bad things happening in life. And then they'll complain about like the one bad thing that like the one marginal bad thing that happened. It's all relative, right? Think about it from this lens. If like, bad things happen to you your entire life, then you like have a baseline of like, oh, this is something that's awful. This is something that I actually will consider a real problem. This is something that, you know, I hope doesn't happen again. Because you've actually dealt with bad things. But if you haven't had any bad things happen to you, then your baseline is like very, very low. So then you're probably not necessarily going to understand unless you are trying to be empathetic uh, and really like realize what other people go through, right? So it takes like an empathetic person to put themselves outside of their position to try to look at other people's positions if they haven't had anything bad happen to them. That makes sense. Anyway, let's keep going. Keep vibing. Yes, sirs. I think we win this. Akido's family. Dude, the metal name makes me feel of Drew. You guys remember Drew, the community manager? He was like hardcore into metal. You see the tier list that Riley and Ian made? Yeah, it was really cool. Um, that being said, like if every YouTuber made a different tier list, I wouldn't be at number one. I wouldn't be the S plus best content creator from every single person. So just look at it from, you guys should always understand that like content creation is always stylistic. People have different preferences and um, <laughs> One person's preference does not mean like it's accurate 100%. It's just, you know, it's cool. I'm glad that they, they said I was the best YouTuber in Clash Royale. That's really awesome. Um, that being said, like everyone has different opinions. All right, we're going to go for a drill here. We'll go wall breakers and we'll keep going. What was your favorite state of the game? Uh, my favorite state of the game was when I won every game. Like I was the top three best players in the world and winning every game with minor poison. That was like a long, long, long time ago. Like that was in 2017. Um, but that was my favorite point. Because <laughs> I couldn't lose. No matter what I did, I always won. Because like the people I was playing against uh, were not that great at the game. <laughs> I wish I created content back then because I think I would have gotten a ton of views. Or I know I would have. And then also like it would have been fun because I think we would have developed our content a lot earlier. Then our content would have been even better than it is right now because I would have been like further along in the process if that makes sense because it took me a while to get here but i think i could have gotten here faster you know that's what i wish i wish i was able to start something a little bit earlier and just grind a little bit harder um with content creation you have to be lucky and you also have to be good at what you do and be unique enough to that people would want to watch you over others uh so for me one of my competitive advantages in clash trial is my my editing I don't think there's anyone else that has my style of editing. I don't think there's anyone else that could do it even if they wanted to, because it takes a lot of time to hire the editors, to train them in my specific style, the way that I like it. It's really, 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 really hard to do what I do as well as I do in that very specific field. Obviously, like you want to do something that differentiates you from other YouTubers, differentiates you from other people. Uh, maybe people don't like what I do, that's fine, but at least what I do, I'm pretty good at what I do. Uh, that's really important. Um, you got to be good at what you do or do what you like as well. Because one of my biggest philosophies that made me grow in YouTube is creating content that I actually would like watching. Content that I look at, and I'm like, hey, I enjoyed watching this video. If I don't enjoy watching the video, I don't publish it. So that's one thing that I will always do. I will only create content that I personally enjoy watching. Otherwise, it gets deleted from my, uh, my upload schedule and it just won't be uploaded on the channel. Um, your editing is insane. I really do like the editing. Thanks, man. Yeah, I think the editing is pretty good. I think the way that we pace videos is pretty good as well. Um, I'm sure if you like look at B-Rad's pacing for videos, it's really enjoyable as well. Um, pacing matters so much. Obviously, my style is completely different than B-Rad's, but I think that if you look at like generally one common thing about YouTubers that get a lot of views is the pacing is always enjoyable. Uh, there's not much downtime. Like one of the main comments that I get from Clash Royale uh, people in the comment section is like, why did you cut out a certain part of the video? Or why did you cut out um, like part of the game and skip to the end? Well, I literally defended for five minutes and we knew that the game would be over. So I wanted to cut it out so that we didn't waste everyone's time. B-Rad does that to a much greater degree. He'll cut around and only show the most entertaining parts of every single game. And then he'll record a lot more games. Um, so for me, I try to show the full game. But sometimes the full game is too boring, so I, I will cut the part of the games out. Um, 
pacing matters a lot for YouTube. It's really, really important. If you can tell a story and you can make it enjoyable to watch, then a lot of people will watch it. Oh no. I lost. I'm surprised that uh, the Fire Spear didn't hit. That kind of sucked. If the Little Prince died, I think it would have been a much better spot. Royal Giant's super strong right now. All right, still winnable, but it's like not looking great. Obviously. Okay. That doesn't hit tower. I think I lost. I lost. GG. All right, we'll play for one more game, I guess. Um, GG and well played our opponent. I didn't expect to lose that. I guess Rail Giant is really, really good right now, too. We lost all of our games to RG. The ones that I did try, the games that I did try and lost were all to Rail Giant. The other ones that I didn't really focus on, I didn't really lose to anything else besides RG. The, the, the other ones I lost, I think I could have won or I got hard countered randomly. But, like, the games that I truly lost by, like, I feel like were hopeless games that were decent were all based into RG games. Really interesting. I guess Royal Giant is tough sometimes. All right, let's win this one. Is RG your least favorite matchup? Nope. RG is generally pretty easy. It really depends on the matchup that you get. Um, I think specifically RG sometimes can be tough if the small interactions don't go in your favor because then the Royal Giant that's raged up kills your entire tower. So like in the last game, we lost the game because the Royal Giant uh, was able to finesse us with the... Um, Little Prince still staying alive. That Personally, I don't think the Little Prince should have still stayed alive. I thought the Fire Spirit would be able to do that. The Fire Spirit got knocked back because the Royal Giant knocked the Fire Spirit. So then the Royal Giant uh, was able to stay alive because the Little Prince was able to guard it. The Little Prince was the real guardian in that game. All right, we're going to go for Wall Breakers here. And let's see if we can beat a Mega Knight player. You guys believe in me? Let's end on a W beating Mega Knight. Unless we haven't gotten five games. And we'll do one more. You guys know for four or five wins. You give me a deck to use for Arena 17. I'm practically through the arena and I'm practically stuck. Uh, yeah. I mean, what you can do is you can check out my pinned comment. And I have a video where I push from ultimate champ or from all the way from like League One to ultimate champion. And that deck can be used on ladder. It can also be used on... Trophy Road, it's one of the best decks to use. I would really recommend playing that. Uh, and I used underleveled cards, and I got to Ultimate Champion against people that had level 15 cards with two evolutions. And I was beating level 15 players with two evolutions when I had one evolution and I was level 14. So you can check that out in the pinned comment. Or you can go to my live stream section and see that. But yeah, I literally was able to push for six hours with no boosts and reach Ultimate Champion. I think I won 96 games, and I only lost like around two. The deck was really, really good. You gotta do one more game afterwards? Okay. I guess uh, I guess we're playing one more after this. But yeah, check out the pinned comment if you guys haven't already. Um, seen that. Um, you'd probably enjoy. Oh, no. Well, that's not good. Oh, it activated King Tower! What? How did that activate King Tower? Bro. Bro, that's crazy. Oh! Wow, that was a sick fireball. That wasn't even a prediction. We take those. Why is Pekka running Mega Knight? <laughs> Wait, he's fallen to the dark side. He has fallen to the dark side. No longer does he run Pekka. He only plays Mega Knight. Even after the buff, he's not running Pekka. The disrespect. The disrespect to give up on Pekka like that, you know? What the heck, man? Put some respect on the Pekka's name, my brother. I, I don't think this hits his tower anymore, does it? Oh, it does still. Cool. I didn't know that. The Evil Bomber at the bridge still takes tower from that position. That's pretty strong. The Evil Bomber is still a busted card. It's it's like Magic Archer almost. Ah, it's better than Magic Archer still. All right, so we'll play one more just for the heck of it. You guys wanted me to. I, I'll do it. We'll play one more just because we lost one. Uh, it's a fake P.E.K.K.A. A true P.E.K.K.A. player would only run P.E.K.K.A. A true P.E.K.K.A. player might run P.E.K.K.A. Mega Knight. Alright, so let's do this. Let's go for a Fire Spirit against this. 
Drop it in the back, make it jump on the skeletons, minimize the amount of damage. It took a lot of damage, but it's okay. We're going to Valkyrie on top of that little prince. I think that's fine too. Go guards first. Pulls everything. I don't think he pops the ability, but maybe he does. Be a pretty bad ability in my opinion. In my personal opinion. He'd be down a lot of elixir. Alright, the Valkyrie's gonna be tanking, the Evo Bomber is gonna be a pain, but it's fine. So this guy is running the strategy of Firecracker with Evo Bomber that you guys were talking to me about. You're like, Jake, why don't you do this? I think this will show you guys why, hopefully. No. Unfortunate. Alright, well, we should be able to Evo Bomber on whatever Valkyrie or whatever he drops here. Ah, not into that. Well, I guess we can kill that really quickly and then uh, Evo Bomber on it. Probably the best play that we can do. Nice, he has no Elixir. That's two hits on the tower. That's uh, 800 damage a pop. Very cool. Well, it wasn't 800 damage a pop. It was 800 damage for the first one. The second one only did one bounce. A little bit worse. No Valkyrie in cycle, so how is he going to defend against this? Well, this is probably pretty bad for me. Might have messed this up, not going to lie. Our strategy might hinge on the defensive fire spirit into the fly machine, into eating all the rest of the stuff, and going in for one of these. Pulling up uh, his units a little bit further means that the skeletons pop really far away from the tower so they don't get on top of me. Terrible ability on his end. We can now defend this with a Valkyrie. And then he's dead. You can't defend this. It's over. And that's a GG. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to go Goblin Cage uh, and then probably lose the game. He's not going to drop it fast enough. Oh, wow. He's not going to drop it. He's dropping it like it's hot, apparently. One of my tennis coaches used to scream that. He's like, drop it when it's hot. Or, drop it like it's hot. Whenever we played tennis, we'd scream that and hit a drop shot. And then he would just be like a maniac. It would not be fun. Be <laughs> Imagine like a 50-year-old tennis instructor screaming drop it like it's hot when they drop a sh drop shot right in front of you and you're like a 14 year old kid <laughs> you're just like stop stop it <laughs> he screamed that at us every time <laughs> like the most unnecessary celebration in clash royale history but you know non-clash royale history dropping it in uh tennis too so his uh his degeneracy evolved into a clash royale video today when you drop units, guys, you can scream, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Oops, I, I didn't mean to go into another game. I almost did by accident. Wait, are they done with the birthday things? I think so. Anyway, that was pretty fun. <laughs> very, very fun day today. Uh, I was definitely a little bit more tired than usual. I stayed up a little bit later than I should have the days before. Uh, kind of recuper recuperating and trying to feel better. Um, so yeah, thanks again for everyone that tuned in. It was a very fun stream for me. It was more relaxing chill uh and just entertaining for me to play some clash Royale and enjoy time with you guys so if you enjoyed make sure to drop a like on the video subscribe for daily content at 3 p.m eastern or 12 p.m pst every single day and no matter when you're watching or where you're watching i hope you have an amazing rest of your day also guys make sure to check out the pinned comment if you want to see me pushing from league one all the way here literally challenger one i pushed to ultimate champion in the pinned comment, there will be a video showing how I did this. And I only lost two games. I literally only lost two games. I had no win boost. I did not have the win multiplier then. Uh, I'll do it again this season if you guys like that as well. Let me know if there's any other suggestions that you guys want to see for live streams. If there's like, hey, Jake, I want to see you uh, do this, but on two accounts and make it a 12-hour stream. <laughs> I don't care. I just want to hear what you guys uh, think and what you guys want to see. So let me know down below in the comment section what your ideas are for future videos. And uh, yeah, good luck in the rest of the Double Evolution tournament. If you guys are going to be playing in it, it's pretty fun to do. And uh, yeah, love you guys. I'll see you later. Peace.